Well, hey, what up, everybody? Welcome back to another Time Warp Custom Paint Late Night Paint Night. It's me. My name is Adam Paul. I have my lovely wife, Ashley, here. She will relay any of the questions that you may have along the way if she warrants it and finds them valid. She will relay the message to me and I can go ahead and answer any of those questions. But um, real quick, this is from last week. So you, if you can rewatch this live. Um, but I do want to show you that I did clear coat this and I, I sanded it. So I want you to see the process of, of how I got it to this point. So it's a new style of video that I did. We're going to go ahead and clip to that video real quick. And then we're going to come back and we're going to get right to the board. What's up, guys? Adam at Time Warp here. Welcome back to another video on our channel. Today, I'm going to show you two different methods to remove orange peel from clear coat once it's dry by sanding. So let's get started. Method one involves using a DA sander, also known as a dual action sander. You'll need 600 grit sandpaper that connects to the sander with a Velcro backing pad. This ensures that the sandpaper stays securely in place and doesn't detach from the sander backing pad when it gets wet. With a DA sander, you can quickly and easily sand the clear coat surface using smooth motions, effectively removing all of the orange peel. This will provide proper adhesion for the next layers of paint. If you're adding more graphics like me, in this case, I'll be adding a bronze and silver leafing and re-clear coating. Make sure you follow all the manufacturer's instructions with each coating. Now for method two, we'll be using a Velcro hand sander. You can still use the six inch 600 grit sandpaper for this method as well. However, this time we'll be sanding the surface with an X pattern, once again, utilizing wet sanding. By sanding in this pattern, we'll ensure that the surface stays flat and smooth. Once the surface is dry, you'll be able to see any imperfections that need further attention. To finish off the process, I always sand the edges using 600 grit sanding sponges. This helps prevent burn through and once again, provides a surface for proper adhesion for the next layers of paint. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and your journey of custom paint. Remember, I'm here to help you succeed as a custom painter. Be sure to check out my other videos on this channel and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. All of the paint and the materials that I use in this video is available on the Amazon link down in the description. Thanks for watching. All right, there it is. Hopefully that video helped a few of you out, but that's um, basically the, to the point that we're at here, besides the little little uh, strands of tape that I'm laying down, that's where we're at. So um, you can rewatch the live last week of how we got it from the metal flake to, to this the pattern with the candies. Um, what the plan is, is we're gonna lay out some leaf on these two sides that I'm taping out right now. And then we're gonna lay out another leaf on this outside, but on this outside one, we're gonna mix up some green, similar to like what we did here. And we're gonna do a green fade on top of that silver leaf after um, it's been spun. So we'll go ahead and give that a shot, make, see if we can make something work out of that. But uh, in the meantime, if there's any questions you have, I know a lot of people have questions when it comes to the leaf, you know, how long it takes, um, how long till you can spin it. We'll go through some of that stuff. So if you have any questions, let me know. We're going to get right to it. But uh, yeah, thanks for being here, guys, for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim my edges here. So when I re-cleared this, I obviously had to retape out my lines, which is not a big deal. I just making sure that I'm hitting roughly close to the same line that I had before. So, Cody Daniel just sent you a twenty dollars super chat. Oh, thanks, Cody. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for checking in, man. I'm sure, who else we got on here? We got uh, Carrie, Randy, Jordan, Diamond Custom Paint. Killer Capricorn. Thanks for being here, guys. 
Michael Jarvis. What's up, dude? I've seen an order from you today, I think. thought I saw your name. Um, Owen Kennedy. John Cox, as always. Thank you. Thank you so much. Like I said, we'll be, this is not going to be an ordinary, because I know I've done these before. Um, this isn't going to be like an ordinary silver leafing. We'll be mixing up some candy paint uh, to be able to do a fade into like a gold. Uh, we'll make sure we get a nice fade there. The The process is a little bit different considering that we want to leave it taped up because usually I wouldn't spin it until uh, I pulled all of the tape. I feel like it's better to do that, but we are going to go ahead and we'll have to break some of those rules in order to lay out some candy so we don't have to to uh, tape it out again. But no big deal, even if we have to. Oh, sorry. Randy gave you a $5 super chat. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and then Randy asked a question and said, can you use waterboard and solvent-based paint on the same job? Uh, you can. You would have to... You obviously can't mix those two together, but if it's all dry, um, I've done that before. I've, I've used some waterborne paints and then use solvent paints. You just make sure everything's good and dry. Um, also, if you're using water base, just remember don't use glass cleaner um, because that'll actually just that'll clean off all of your. I've made that mistake. That'll actually wipe out all your graphics. Uh, Rob said, I'm painting Lexan RC bodies. Can I gold leaf from the back side? That's a good question. Um, I, wow. Um, I think that would work, actually. Uh, the, the leafing, uh, well, you know, the spin, really, you won't literally get the spin. If you want the leaf, that's fine. And I think that would actually work because the glue dries clear. And I wouldn't see why it wouldn't look the same. The only thing is when you spin it, you're obviously not going to get the spin. But yeah, very interesting. If you do it, let me know. Carrie said, hey, everyone that came from the previous video, please don't forget to give this live a like as well. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Hit that, hit that like button if you, and, and let me know what you thought of that video. I kind of did like a, a more of a voiceover. I don't know. I wanted to give a little bit more instruction on it. But instead of just jumping, you know, jumping on live here, expecting you guys to know exactly where I'm at when I was behind the scenes clear coding this and sanding it, and you're really not knowing exactly where I'm at, I figured I'd just throw these little short videos you know, in the live videos. So... Kind of, kind of people can get up to speed on exactly what's going on. Leslie P said that's how they gold leaf signs on shop windows is on the back side. So. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah. Cool. That's right. They would do that. Toby said, "Did you hear from the shirt people after?" Oh yeah. What is the deal with that? I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Because it's been. Mm -hmm. It's been a little bit more. I'll have to check my email. I thought I sent them an email, but I haven't heard back, which is different. So maybe I just didn't hit send or something. Let me check it out and see. I'll do it right now. Uh, Swampy said the video was good. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, I was hoping that was going to help you guys out. Yeah, a lot of more voiceover on that one. I uh, don't know if I'll do them all like that, but I am going to do more like that. All right, so I got, looking here, we're going to be leafing here and here. So I'm just taping up the lines that I already had previously because I'm going to have to tape up the lines again because I cleared this and I sanded it. Can't leave your tape line. So I'm retaping this out. I got off a little bit there. We're going to be fine. No, no big deal. So we got, we're going to do a variegated leaf inside here and a, a silver leaf on the outside with a, a candy tint to it. So we'll be mixing up a custom green color that we can apply over the top of that. We can basically tint it any color we want. We can go blue, red. I haven't done green yet, so I figured this would be the perfect board for it. 
I've done brown, I've done blue, and I've done purple. I haven't done red over the leaf, but I bet that would look amazing. I guess I didn't send it, but I did. Whoop, I did just now, so we'll see what Coop says. Is that the guy that's doing it? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool shirts. Diamond Custom Paint said, I really like the video, added some knowledge, even if you know it's always a good refresher. Carrie said, I think it was really good. I watched it on the TV while I was here on my laptop. So yes, we're going to eventually need a 12-step program for this. Yeah. <laughs> Roman said, thumbs up on the video. Um, how long do you let clear cure before continuing with gold leafing? Um, so this has been... I cleared this yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah. No, that's actually been two days. But you, you only need to wait about uh, 12 hours. It kind of depends on the temperatures. Um, it's pretty hot here. So within within uh, 12 hours, you're good to go. 24 hours is probably a better bet. But if it's if it's good enough to sand, it's it's pretty much good enough to paint. Uh, do you ever use do or do you? Not sure. Did I say that. Do you? Oh, do you ever use a few drops of dishwashing liquid in your water for wet sanding? Oh, um, no. I actually did know that though. That was that was something I learned in school a long time ago in uh, auto body school. We actually did that. I think the only thing is you want to make sure that it doesn't have that uh, chemical in it. I think it's called lanolin, if I'm not mistaken. But if it has lanolin in it, you don't want to use it because it's a silicone. And if you get silicone like contamination, you're going to have a lot of problems. It's going to cause like a fish eyes all over the place. So yeah, that's a it makes it slick. Yep, I should probably do that. But lanolin free for sure. Um, will taping your lines over clear leave a layered effect? You're not going to be able to see it. That's a very, very good question. Um, he's asking, um, are you going to be able to see the layer difference? And the, the answer is no. Even though it is on the top, by the time it's cleared, you, you can't see that, that edge. I hope that's always, that's a very good question though. Scott asked how the shirts and hoodies come in. Shirts, well, I know they're in process of getting made. I was supposed to email the dude, I guess last weekend I had it just sitting in there and never hit send. So hit send today. So we'll see what he says. Good reminder though. Yeah, no, thanks for that. I was gonna <laughs> I ask you. I, do that. I was gonna ask you too, and then I was like, I forgot. Yeah. So I sent it to because we'll see what he says. Because I thought we'd have them by now. I did too. But good news, we do have the new guns coming on Monday. Yeah, we got word that those will be here Monday for sure. Those are the 1.4 uh, HVLPs. They're a nice gun. I've been using it for a while now. Uh, about four months now. Ben Custom Paint is Jeremy Diamond. He said it's Jeremy Diamond. Changed to official name for Instagram and YouTube. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, I was wondering. Yeah, that was right. something that's cool. I wondered if it was him too. That's cool. Creative Pets Media said, Hey, gang, out running errands this evening, trying to catch bits and pieces of the live show tonight. Wow, we appreciate you being here. We know everybody's busy. But that's cool that you can tune in on your phone, like wherever you're at. You can be like totally in like the Home Depot with your earbuds in and like still catch some of it. He said, painted my best helmet yet and ended up running the damn clear coat and got candy bleed, trying to get over it and move on. Oh, yeah, that happens. You know, and then I was actually worried about candy bleeding a little bit on this because it's so prone for these shades to, that are so close to each other that if you hit this too wet too early, it's going to make everything kind of run together and you're going to lose the effect. And not only that, is it'll run into your silver lines bleeding into it which is terrible. Like you literally, 
it's a cry. you do because it's a not an easy thing to fix at that point. But yeah, hit it like when you're first clear coating your candies, hit it with a couple of drier coats. So that way you can get um, some a little bit clear on there to to set up on top. So that way when you start hitting it wet, it's not going to like wet everything. It has a little bit of a barrier. You know, that makes sense, right? To you, Ash? That makes sense? Not until you said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it does, though. Now you're all cleared up on that. Maybe not. Uh, well, I mean, if you were to like hit it really, really wet at first, like say, like I didn't, I'm just getting ready to clear this, okay? And I'm going to put a really fat, thick coat on it. It's going, those solvents are going to be really wet on there, right? It's going to stay really wet for a long time. Yeah. yeah yeah and if it stays really wet for a long time what's happening is it's given these layers of candy time to like leach up into the clear coat and then shift around because what happens with clear coat is it shifts around and it kind of flows out so it sucks it up and it flows it out that makes sense mm -hmm. because it's so wet at first but if you were to throw a couple of dry coats on there it dries really fast like if i was just a sh -sh -sh and it would literally be like dry, like in, a, in like five minutes and do it again. And then you have like 75% coverage and then maybe hit it with a medium coat on the next one, just to be really careful. But other than that, you, now you have a barrier of a little bit of that hard and clear coat to where you, when you put your wet coat, it's not going to attack all of those candy colors that can be re-wetted, you know? So now you understand, right? Yeah. Like, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I figure if you understand they'll understand yeah okay that's exactly what mine did gold into the silver lining yeah you might be able to sand if it's gold you might be able to that depends on how bad it is but i've saved a few jobs when they were just in a couple of spots big p said i love the section that goes from gold to brown it's like a 1970s color palette yeah. Which I'm a sucker for and want to do on my bike. Yeah, it is definitely like the 70s. <laughs> it's cool. Rad. What about fair base coat before 2K? Um, that is, yes, that is a good option. Yeah. So like we were talking that how the candies or the clear coats can disturb the candies. Um, you can lay over a clear base coat or inner coat clear on top of it, which will further um, help it. But I don't necessarily like doing that because then you're just adding more thickness of uncatalyzed paint that you just don't need. You can do it if you're if you think you might run it, you know. So yeah, that would help protect that. That's a good. Speaking of, good how question. many coats of clear do you normally use over flakes, and what's the most you've done? Uh, over over flaked like over the flake alone you need um the minimum four coats and then you can sand it down usually you can start there and then do you do your um another session so i would say three sessions uh 12 to 14 coats total is would be a normal paint job for me That's but awesome. it could be more than that uh, uh on that tin foil i think i've probably done 30 plus for sure and it's and it's holding up too i know a lot of people have negative stuff to say about over clear coating something but it's still holding up it's still looking good sometimes you just have to break the rules like massively in order to, to do th certain things but if you don't have to break the rules that much don't do it that's a lot of clear coat <laughs> I'm just taking some ordinary paper and using it as masking on this because I'm not sure where that went.
dead leaf in stock. I don't see it on Amazon. Um, yeah, it's actually labeled as um, copper bronze. Copper bronze. Copper slash bronze I yeah. It's labeled as, uh, it's not actually labeled as variegated, and I, I need to get that fixed. But you'll see in the photo, it is the variegated. So check for that, copper bronze. Johnson, I bleed and run everything you can, but a uh, light coat seems to stop all the bad things from happening. Yes, and that is definitely correct because light coats can help um, contamination problems. Like if you've noticed, like say you put your first coat on and then you just notice there's like a bunch of fish eyes and stuff. You probably could have, even though it's, it probably would happen anyways, it just wouldn't happen as bad if you're going to have a problem. So if you're going to have a fish eye problem you're gonna, and, you, and because of some kind of a contamination, it's going to be intensified if you apply heavy coats at first. Um, Cody says he can't. He, he sees copper, gold, and silver, but not the other one. Oh, man. Really? Hmm. There's a... Huh. On my Amazon link, on the, the Time Warp Amazon link, you should be able to find it there for sure. And that's linked. I think it's linked in this video. No, it's not linked in this video. It's linked in all my other videos. So you'll just see the shop, the shop on Amazon link. Mm -hmm. Mills, like, a, like meaning in thickness. Okay? Uh-huh, yep. In a layer of clear coat, like if you have something with tighter tolerances mechanically, do you have to be mindful of how many layers of paint and clear you're laying? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it can, uh, that's where you can get up to like a mill of paint <laughs> when it comes to custom paint, you know. What's what's a mill? A mill's, a mill's not even that thick, really. Uh, with three mills is the thickness of a dime, if I remember right. And that would be that's pretty thick. Yeah, that's de it's definitely will mess with stuff like that that you have any kind of a tolerance. Larry says, I see candies are out. Awesome. Yeah, they're out uh, a couple weeks ago. We have the primary colors, the red, the gold, and the blue, and we also have the black candy as well. And they're all concentrate forms in a four ounce uh, they're on sale on pretty much every platform. Uh, Amazon, you'll see a coupon there, so make sure you hit that that coupon button. And then it'll automatically, if you're on Shopify, it'll automatically be reduced there. So those will be on sale till for the end of, was it this month or next month? Yeah. I think it's this month? Yeah. So yeah, to the end of this month. And then they'll probably be on sale some more. Who knows? Josh said on the tinfoil. Let's see. I mean, sorry. Let's see. On the tinfoil jobs, what was it like sanding the first few layers of clear? Was it difficult to get sanded in the valleys? And did you have to worry about pressing out the embossing? Mm, I was mindful of pressing too hard. And yes, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't sand very well at first. It sands really crappy. So you have to kind of get into the grooves. I'm going to do that again, but I'm going to try using maybe an epoxy pour or something like that rather than all the clear coat because it does take so much time for that to dry. It's a lot of work, but I've seen more and more people do it. I saw another one today. Uh, looked phenomenal that somebody did. Every time I see it, though, I'm like, damn, that's a lot of work. <laughs> I was like, oh, geez, he did it. Like, he did it. <laughs> I'm like, just, I know your pain. Patrick sent you a $20 super chat. Yeah, right on, Patrick. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I think so for all the, the those are awesome. Cody said he found it, but it said it wasn't in the leaking section. Oh. Weird. Hmm. Oh, I have it probably in the lime line section. I should probably move that in the leaking section. Sophie said fish eye normally happens due to wet air in the lime. Would you agree? Um yes. 
that could definitely happen. It could also happen if somebody like sprayed WD-40 around your parts. Even if it was like 20 feet away, it could cause some severe problems. In the air? Just be spraying that in the air. Yeah, so be careful of that. Uh, but yeah, water in your lines will do. And also, if water could like beat up and, and splash onto your parts, like you got so much water in your lines, it could actually come out in like a water chunk and it would cause little uh like divots it's not a fish eye it's like it's a di literally a divot because it's just a, yeah a crater there you go crater that's what it is all right so we got our first couple of lines we're gonna do we're gonna do variegated on these we somebody talked about variegated just a second ago we're gonna be doing it we got the lime line sizing glue mixed one to one with water out of this bottle so I do have this pre-mixed in it right here. It's white, but it does go clear. It does have a uh, pearlized, like blue purple tint to it. So you, when you know it, it does disappear when it dries. So you'll kind of see that as well, hopefully. Using, what are we using on this one? The Neo. Yep. Larry said, hey, my work schedule has sucked lately. Sorry, been a while. Dude, sucky work schedules. Oh, man, quit that job. <laughs> Don't say that. Just paint all day. Oh, huh, what? Just paint all day. Quit that job. <laughs> Take the dive. Okay, maybe pra if you're new, just practice a little bit and then quit that job. <laughs> okay, so we're loaded up. Someone says, Love your work. I need to learn to leaf better. I can't get the swirls right. Well, well here you go. We're not going to swirl this one, but we're going to swirl the next one we do around here. Okay, load it up. We're going to go ahead and do, I'm feeling pretty confident. So I'm going to do both these sides at the same time. Once again, uh, first coat, we're just going to go on light. Making sure we're getting it on even. We don't want to make it build and beat up. Like we don't want to layer it. Let's see. Oh, I wasn't in the camera. Let's try this again. See that right there? We don't want it to spread out or make any kind of a texture. Like even if that dries, so that glue right there, let's get that to focus. That glue right there, when it dries, it's going to leave a little bit of a rough texture. That's what we don't want because we need it to be really smooth. So we need to be laying down coats that are like this. That you can't, you can barely even see, you know, so nice and smooth. I should probably do less talking and more working because I'm going to screw this up. <laughs> Flip it around. I'm going to do the other side. Someone just saw that zebra bike. That's sick. Oh, yeah. That's an awesome bike. My buddy owns that. Are you going to do something on top of the deck? Skate deck? Uh, uh, no, no. Oh, on this? Yeah. Oh, it's done. Yeah. It has the it has the Mexican blanket on there. Have you tried the Brazil DV1 for clear coat? Uh, I have not tried anything to Vilbus for like 15 years. Are you aiming for the edges? Nope. I'm actually, that's a good question. I'm actually aiming, um, right for the center and making sure I'm getting it as even as possible. But yeah, usually when I'm painting paint, I'm aiming for the edges and blending in because we want that blend, but on glue, we don't want to blend. We want it all even. We don't want any, you know, heavy edges. Okay, it's starting to get tacky there. I'm going to go ahead and flip it around. We're going to do one more coat. Right. 
you didn't explain help everything you explain helps out here and there. The more you explain about anything helps us out along the way. Yeah, I'm I'm glad to hear that because that's I just I'm glad that that's actually working. I don't want to just talk and not make sense. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's what I usually do. When we talk about paint, I actually make a little bit of sense in my life. Patrick said, would a fan tip trigger pipe brush be... Ooh, that was... Would a fan tip trigger brush pipe brush be good for applying the size? Uh, Yeah, I think he'd be fine with that. As long as it's going on smooth. As a hobby, I build custom firearms to include, oh, damn, I'm going to say these the wrong way, bluing, karaoke, anodizing, cycling, milling. If you ever want to collab on something like that, I'd be highly open. Enjoy your work. Oh, really? Huh. Cool. Yeah, hit me up. All right, I'm going to remove my gloves because they're sticky and my palms are sweaty. I just ate spaghetti. Oh, I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> all right, all right, I all right. I knew you were going to sing that. We're going to try to lay this out nice and smooth. Yeah, I'm sweaty. Well, it did just downpour for like, oh, know, yeah. what, a half an hour here. It's all humid now. It is. Got rain in my drink because I was coming over. Oh man! Rainwater. <laughs> what drink? What, what drink you have there? A white sangria. Oh. It's good. Sounds tasty. fancy. It's tasty. With a little bit of rain. A little bit of rainwater for good luck. Yeah, it makes it organic. <laughs> <laughs> Or you might turn into something. All right, so far so good. Oh, let's get down there. There we go. Nice thing about this variegated leaf is it does come connected like a booklet. So sometimes it's a little easier. Someone said, wait, those oxidized looking foils come like that? I always thought there was a process for that look. No. Yep. Surprise. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> yeah, you can actually get different designs. I noticed somebody, what is his name on Instagram? Uh, I think it's Motalica or something. I could be wrong, but he did a skateboard deck like this, but he did some graphics and he had a variegated leaf in his skull eyeball sockets, but it had a swirl in it. It was awesome. I was like, damn, I haven't, it was a swirl. Yeah. Yep. And he laid them out just right. Is that for leafing on vehicles? Yeah. Yep. Vehicles are uh, mostly vehicles. That's what I do. It's very rare. We, I haven't do skateboard decks, but in this case, we are doing one. But this would be the same process for whether you're doing a skate deck, a helmet, um, yeah, motorcycle, a car, a truck, fire truck, whatever you're doing. The process would probably be similar if you're doing it as on sign painting as well. I'm not sure on glass and on on stuff like that, but. Looks like I lost a little piece right there. Scott says, when you're leafing in an area like that, that that and it's that skinny, can you cut it in half so you don't weigh so much? Yeah, you can. Yep. You would have to put it in a guillotine cutter, though, in order to cut it. Not, like, not regular scissors, right? Like, uh, You might be able to do regular scissors. I don't know. It seems like the regular scissors is going to ruin it because it, it has a th it needs to like to become like a guillotine cut. But um, the, the variegated doesn't come in the rolls, but the uh, the silver and the gold do come in the rolls. That are skinnier. Yeah. That are skinnier, yeah. It's about the right size. I think they're one inch, actually. All 
Okay. A couple spots here. Have you here. ever done a full on lowrider car paint job? Uh, yep, I have. Yeah. I've done a, a Cadillac Seville and I've done a 63 Impala. Is that all I've done? Oh, I did a roof on a. You did a roof on a. a Fifty-seven. Fifty-seven something. Yeah. Like I said, I saw that. <laughs> what? What am I doing? You missed something. Yeah. Something. I watched your image transfer video on that peanut tank. I was amazed to learn that wasn't done with hydro dipping. Oh, yeah. I guess you could do it with hydro dipping. It definitely would be a different process. Mine said, any news on the shirts? Yes, we just talked about that. I messed up last, I believe it was Thursday. Uh, on our live, I think I just got too busy with questions or something. I had wrote an email, but I didn't hit send to the shirt dude. So I just sent it now. Thanks to you all for reminding me. But if they were done, they would have hit us up, so they wouldn't have been done anyways. Yeah, but I just asked them to keep the new time on it. So. Which, how long did he say before? Did he say, yeah, it's fine? He did we say 12, 12 weeks. Oh, no problems coming in late. It's all good. Um, but he did say 12 weeks. Uh, print the material, cut it, and all that. Oh, so. okay. So it's been about that. And we ordered quite a bit, so. Yeah, we're excited to actually have those for you guys. I'm excited to have one because they're um, they're cool like party shirts rather than just the t-shirt, which we'll probably get more into the t-shirts and the hoodies, especially the hoodies uh, come fall season. It would be nice to have those. Yeah. Yeah. There was something on Amazon that we could do. I'm going to do them now. Get them ordered now so that we can have them next time. It's cool. Mm -hmm. How wide of leaping on a roof? Uh, how wide? Um, I'll, you know, he asked if I'd done lowrider stuff. As I haven't actually done the leafing on a lowrider. It's always been on motorcycles or stuff like this. Um, but I would do the same. I'd do one inch. That's my go-to because the one inch is the turner size you'd be able to get a nice turn on that how do the world spin uh, how does it spin uh it's just kind of like a you put your you put tip. your yeah you put your finger through the middle of the roll <laughs> i guess and then you spin it i got a i got one somewhere right here oh do i oh yeah okay yeah we got it right here oh comes right off just like that. What do you spray to get this boiled stick? What did you spray? Um, I used a uh, a sizing glue, lime line sizing glue through an airbrush. Yeah. For, for those that came in late, yeah, I used for the foil. I used this. Are you talking about a leaf? Or, I don't know if you say you mean foil or a leaf. He means the leaf because it's also called foil. Yeah. God, that happened to me last week. Yeah, this is uh, this is leafing foil, I guess, is what we're. Okay, well, I'm talking about like the real Reynolds wrap foil, but. <laughs> oh yeah. Reynolds foil, but well, I can see why you get that confused because <laughs> we've done the actual foil. Hey, from Queensland, Australia. What is the work time for each layer of leaf? Um. So as long we we've already applied it. So you have about five minutes or so, kind of depends on the temperature. Um, after five minutes, you definitely would want to recoat it. You know, so you don't want to leave it sitting for too long. Five minutes would be max. I already had the leaf stuck. So that was the first thing I did was stuck this leaf. And um, once it's covered, it's not, it's not going to dry as fast because basically you're covering it from uh, evaporating. So, you know, once the leaf is stuck, you're good to go. You're just good to, you know, actually this process, you would probably want to get on it, you know, sooner than later. But yeah, just make sure you lay down that leaf in that wind time window, five minutes or less. If not, just put another coat on it. No big deal. You can do as many coats of the glue as you think you need. But just make sure that you're getting it on even and then, you know, over applying it. 
school that I entered. It's 110 on the car dash down here. And high school kids <laughs> have a new trend of wearing hoodies as a uh, hoodies as a new trend, especially black when stepping off the school bus. Go figure, <laughs> dude. I know that. And then beanies. I'm like, how in the hell are you wearing a beanie when it's 100 degrees out? Oh yeah. I don't know. Damn. And then you're going to wear that be the next day. You can be stanky, kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know they're wearing it for like three weeks oh, straight. Oh, God. No. What's happening to this board when you're done with it? Would look good on my wall. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you just said the, the lucky word. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, though, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't know. This will probably go in the showroom. It's a good one. To, it is a good one to keep. Jeremy said, I use the line line sizing for the tin foil. It works awesome. Oh, oh, the tin foil. Yes, you can. Oh, no, I didn't know you can. I've never actually tried that. I used other glue because I didn't have the glue when I first did that. But I figured it would work. Yeah. But thanks for letting me know that. Yeah. He, so he did the tin foil. Right. I yes. That. That's not an easy one, as we've talked about. This leafing is much, much easier than the tin foil. This is tin foil you don't brush away. You literally cut it and lay it down and then build up over it with a bunch of layers of clear coat. Yeah, maybe we'll do that again, but we'll have to see if I have another 30 days to waste. Do you put a substance below or above the material? So below this is glue, and above it will be clear coat. be 2k clear coat so part a part b straight out of a paint gun so and another thing is two i said 2k did i say 2k clear coat so a lot of people i noticed they don't um if you're new you don't know what 2k means 2k means that it's just two parts there's a part a and a part b those mixed together they chemically harden so that like things like gasoline stuff like that um has a harder time penetrating it and you know loosening it up because it has two parts that chemically dry also they dry harder and you're able to um, sand and polish two k's rather than one case it really doesn't happen it can't it it, it kind of doesn't fully harden you need the two parts so if it's called 2k that means it has two parts that's what you want if it says 1k that means it's one part it depends on what you do you can use 1k but not on not on anything that's like uh, automotive related nothing definitely on a car nothing on a motorcycle if you want it to last okay looking good so we're going to clarify swampy said what i meant how does the rolls work with the machine with with turning it with spinning it not like oh. actually work oh <laughs> sorry i either i read that wrong or <laughs> something <laughs> i thought that was a weird question <laughs> I was like, you really want me to answer this? You meant <laughs> uh, yeah, it works good. It works good. I usually use the, I prefer to use the loose uh, leaf sheets myself, but they still spin good. The le I have a, an abundance of the uh, the leaf sheets. I have so much leaf sheets, but uh, limited supply of the, of the other stuff. <sighs> okay, let's get that out of here. All right, let's go ahead and we'll, I could double leaf this. I'm not going to. Uh, maybe I'll hit that with a roller real quick. Make sure we got these edges. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the outer edge here because we are going to be doing the silver leaf on this as well and then tinting it. So we're going to pull off what we need to expose here. Huh. How the hell did you get those patterns to line up? Did you do that in tinting or is it tricking my eye? Uh, I think it's tricking your eye. <laughs> I'm not that good. He's like, what the heck? 
He's like, whoa! What is going on over there? How long should you work the leaf? Um, you know, the the longer the better, to be honest. If you want to get in there and make sure you get all your edges tucked in, that's it's gonna look much better. I'm gonna it's gonna be pretty good here, not perfect. Um, if this was a board that was very very important, then I would I would probably double leaf it still. Because double leaf, if you have any kind of imperfections, it will um, help cover in that, in the double leafing process. And we will double leaf the silver because we're going to be spinning it and laying some candy over it. So we're going to want to make sure it's super, um, super clean and uh, make sure we don't have any spots that, that are missing chunks or anything like that. Okay, so we have exposed that. We're going to leave that. Pull this side. Jeremy said, my wife made me paint her a water bottle like the dog did. She did with the Louis Vuitton. Oh, that's awesome. On your Instagram. <laughs> hey, I should make him do that for me. I know. Huh? I walk around with that. People be like, damn, where'd you get that? That's brilliant. Yeah. I should have him do that for me, huh? Yeah. Any word on the new paint gun yet? Uh, yeah, Monday, actually. The new paint gun. We'll be here on Monday, and we'll probably be out on Wednesday. How far does your sizing glue go? Um, it it will last a really long time because you're mixing it one to one with water, and I use like a half of a cup full. So you're going to be able to do pretty much any project with it. So I wouldn't buy more than one bottle if you're first starting. One bottle is going to be fine to last you a very long time. Probably like four motorcycles or something. Have you ever experienced problems with 2K lifting or separating from the leaf? Uh, yes, I have. And I feel like that would be an issue of oversaturating once again on the first coats. Um, I personally haven't like in a very long time. I know that there that people have had issues here and there what they have done they've layered some uh, bulldog adhesion promoter over the top i've never done it i would i prefer not to and really i haven't had problems ever since i just started with the light coat so once i hit this with clear coat i'm gonna hit it with a light coat at first it'll give that first layer of clear coat t time to set up so it can bond um before hammering it down and creating a really thick dense layer on top that you're ex you're expecting that just to lay on top and to adhere it's better just to do very light coats on at first so that way you can get that grip so you're also going to help with um if you do that it's going to help with running like if you have a tendency to run anything those tack coats we call them a tack coat which is a light coat at first will help with that it'll definitely help with that and, and a lot of the other contamination problems that we've uh, spoke about earlier I should probably do a video on that, huh? Maybe I should try to, I bet I know I can. Maybe I should like do one that is contaminated. That scares me, but. Contaminated. Someone says, do you use distilled water or tap water? I just use tap water. I have not had a problem, but um, distilled water would be just fine, obviously. So if you're worried about it, wherever you're pulling your water from, you know, maybe I just usually use bottled water, whatever I have in the shop. How long do you let tack coat flash off? That's all uh, relevant to like how uh, how hot it is, but really you only need a tack coat to flash off for about five minutes. It all depends on how light it, it is and then, you know, how heavy your, your air pressure. Because I also like to turn the air pressure up a little bit so it gets the, uh, the, the paint particles when they spray on, they're smaller sizes. They're like tiny little dots rather than when you spray your first coat and it was thick it would be larger dots hopefully that makes sense but yeah smaller is going to be better smaller and thinner to start okay looks like i got this all taped out on the inside i just need to tape out the outside and then we're going to lay out some silver leaf just to tap coat first then uh, tack coat start. Yep. 
and same with the glue I'm getting ready to do. I'm also going to do a tap coat because it's just better to start that way on anything. Same with base coats. Anything you lay down, it's better off. I'm trying to think if there's anything that's not that way. Pretty much everything you do when you start, you want to start out gracefully, <laughs> not pile it on. And, and actually, that's what a lot of people, I think, when they're new, they make that mistake because they want to see the coverage. And they, they don't know that it takes a few coats to actually get the work done. They want to see the work done in the first coat. And they want it to already start to come together. And they're worried if it's not. They're like, oh, man, look how textured it is. I need to throw some more clear coat on this thing quick. <laughs> Which, no, you don't. You need to let it dry a little bit and then throw a little more clear coat on it. So it, um, so it it's experience. And then trusting the process, I think, is a lot of it. Also, and I really should do a video on, you know, clear coating and using the gun. If you're if you're clear coating small parts, you can um, feather the, the gun more. You don't need to go full trigger on, full trigger off. And I know a lot of people are taught that way because that's how you paint cars because you need to really get around them quick. Because you have a wet edge, you need to get all the way around the car and you need to meet up with that area um, to make sure it all like blends together. So they teach you, you know, on and off the trigger like full blast and like that's kind of how i learned and then that's how you make a lot of mistakes too so if you're not in a hurry to where you're painting a whole car and you have you just take it nice and easy you can always just feather it um build it up slowly sorry what do you say a couple that. ideas so i'm gonna put them down Did messing I say it? up what, the leaf? uh like oversaturating it, right? Not, not the leaf, but maybe the uh, the clear coat. Okay. Or no. no. No, you're right. You're right. Oversaturating the leaf. I kind of showed that. I could do a video on that, though. A quick video. And then what was the other A one? bad leaf job compared to a good leaf job. Like, what are the... Because you know, I always preach, don't oversaturate the leaf glue. Uh, maybe we do need it. Maybe not a live, but uh, a video on what it looks like when you don't do it right. And then the other one was showing how to spray... With the gun, clear with the gun, yeah, like smaller parts because you're not like you're not like full trigger on, full trigger off, like a lot of people have learned. So, he said, Thanks for commenting on his Instagram earlier, it means a lot. Oh, yeah, badass, yeah, uh, yeah, that looked amazing. The work you're doing that's incredible. We should, uh, and I was always saying, we should pull some pictures off and show them here because it's pretty amazing what. Um, a lot of you guys are doing it's You're supposed to be sharing all your stuff you yeah a goal of his yeah i like to share i like to share other people's work Post um if you guys if you guys want to share on amazon if you buy on amazon and you share your uh photos or videos in the uh re like you can go into the section do you do the reviews and stuff like that um yeah that's the best place to because because a lot of people see that that are new and you're able to like it shows your work and it shows like what's it what you're able to do but yeah and i and i told i really appreciate that i was like the best thing you guys could actually do for us is um show your work on amazon to show new people you know what what can what can actually be done okay i'll quit babbling does <laughs> glue have a shelf life uh yes it does um when i get it it has a shelf life of three years um but we have we're usually in and out of them through circulating within six months. So yeah, you have, you would have an average of two years with that, but longer if it doesn't dry up, if it's not dry in the bottle, you're good to use it. Can you tape over leaf or do you need a layer of clear over it before you put tape on top? Yeah, you, good question. You shouldn't really be taping to your leaf at all. Um, even with clear coat on it, you, you're better off clear coating up to the or uh, taping up to the edge and then using the paper masking um i do sometimes the tape to it but don't i would say not to because you, you could risk some problems you're asking a lot for that leaf and something not to happen so if you can work your your uh, way around it using uh, tape and paper masking rather than uh, uh sticky like regular masking I've only seen a few of your videos, but so far I want to say great work, man. Love the toilet seat. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we have that actually in the shop. Chilling. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever um, 
Roman says, have you ever used an Iwata LPH80 for cleaning small parts? I've had very good luck with this. Hmm. I want an LPH80. Yeah, I have. Uh, yep. Those. Uh, I think a lot of people actually use that gun. Yeah, that's a pretty. That's a pretty popular gun. Another one of my buddies. He swears by that gun for smaller parts. Patience is a virtue when it comes to painting. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Which silver leaf is brighter and spins better, the roll or the sheets? I would say the sheets do. The, they're made by a different company. They both spin. Um, I like the sheets uh, a little bit better. I feel like the spin's just a little more brilliant on that. It's going to be a little more cost effective too because it costs a lot more to get those put on a roll than it does just in a sheet. And also the roll, it still has the seams in it. It's not a continuous roll. You're still going to, you're still going to have the seams. All right, so let's, once again, and that was a great question. Somebody did mention, are, you know, do you tape to your leaf? And that's the reason why I'm using this paper right here. And so I don't have to. I'm just taping to the edge of the fine line and then sealing it to that paper. Whoa, we don't want to tape that. There we go. Random paint question. I know low VOC paints tend to dry faster. But do you know if it's less durable? Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably not the one the right one to answer that. I don't know enough about that. Uh, the low VOC. Um, I know that I've used them and I didn't like them. But, and you're right, they do evaporate quicker. But I don't know. I feel like I can make anything work. Um, low VOC, I'm not sure how really how low VLC it really is. But yeah, I'm probably not the one to really even comment because I don't know enough on it. Are you going to have more sandpaper for dry sanding? I bought the sandpaper you have now. It cuts really well with wet sanding, and I use a sheet to sand almost a whole bed of the truck. Yeah, when you use wet sanding methods, it's definitely lasts a lot longer. Uh, I don't have, I'm not going to have really any dry sheets. I'm going to have another line of wet sheets um, for hand sanding rather than machine sanding, like the regular black sheets. Uh, so not at the current moment. I'm not going to have any dry sanding paper. Carrie, the one that asked about the low VOC, said, you're not alone. I can't find the answer anywhere. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't, I don't know nothing about that. I think I might know somebody that does, but you'll probably get lost in translation because he don't speak English 100%. said, I know I'm jumping the gun, but if I'm not getting enough definition on my spin, uh -huh. should I press harder on the turner or give it more of a circular spin? Um, you know, I usually if you're not getting a good enough spin, maybe your surface wasn't um, as smooth, as smooth as it should have been. Like you need to have it really super smooth and also laying out your leaf to make sure it's laid out and it's pressed down really good. I feel like those are the the biggest factors with the leaf looking good spun. Not pressing harder. Yeah. Uh, you, to be honest with you, if it lays out really, 
good, less pressure or more pressure almost makes it look the same to a certain point. It doesn't so. really take a lot of pressure because when no. I get it, it's not. No, it didn't take much pressure at all. Yeah, and you could do more pressure, but it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Just more chance of like, you know, burn through and stuff like that. Yeah, because it's tricky because it's, it, it, you know, they're watching you on the video. Like, how, you know, and I, I see that all the time. People say how hard you push it. And I even asked that when you had me practice and do it. And it seemed like, it almost seemed like you do have to push hard, but not really. It's, yeah, I mean, I don't know uh, how to describe how hard to push that. Yeah, more than like, uh, a normal push, I guess, right? I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to think how. Yeah, I don't know how to describe how how to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to just kind of get the feel for it. I think is that you have to actually one of those things you actually have to do it. It's like telling uh, a tattoo artist how hard you have to push on the skin. Yeah. You know, it's like uh, about this hard. They're like, what? Okay, not that hard. <laughs> Remember how I did yours? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he thought he could. I was getting a tattoo on my foot, and he thought he could help out. Uh -huh. Let me just do one spot. And, oh my God, it uh -huh. hurts so freaking bad. You should show him. You should show him the good star I did. <laughs> yeah, the artist was cool. He let me do one of the stars on her foot. Oh, and it hurt. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, how funny. Look at that ink on my skin. Yeah. And then didn't he go to the bathroom or something while I was doing it? Or no? No. He was there watching her. Yeah. I've got that. Like, <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. I'll just go ahead and take it from here. Oh, that reminder came up almost 14 years ago. Whoa. That's a long time ago. Uh, Pastor said, oh God, I would never tell an artist how hard to meet on my skin. <laughs> Well, you should, because when he did it, I was like, oh, I really jumped out of the first tattoo I ever got, and I <laughs> was fine until he touched it. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. Everyone said, wow, you're a nice wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if she actually agreed the whole way, or like, it was like a deal between me and the tattoo artist. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, okay, okay, I think you'll do it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that hurt. Like, babe, I can paint. I was able to paint pretty good then. It wasn't like, uh, well, that was 14. So you said 14 years ago? Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of a crappy painter. I was like on the verge of maybe getting good. But yeah, that doesn't mean that other people can't get good quick. That's just because we didn't have all that, the tutorials and the supplies. And yeah, speaking it's of. Easy, easier now. Speaking of, someone uh, asked, is there good money could be made custom painting? For instance, what kind of profit margin is expected on a full bike job? Uh, yeah, profit margin is hard to because you're doing a service. Um, so it's like it, you kind of have to love it. You're not gonna you're not gonna get like super rich, but you will if you bust your ass. You'll make a, a pretty damn good living. That's for sure. It, it all it just all kind of depends you know make sure you're you're charging what you're worth um and that'll help you stay in business and make sure you're making money if you don't do that it's gonna you're gonna have some problems but yeah there's a lot more there's a lot more customers out there than there used to be because of instagram and youtube and other uh, social media platforms people are able to see what is available like they're able to, they know what custom paint is more than they did 15 years ago because they've seen videos or pictures or, you know, there's just so much out there and they're like, I need to get my bike painted. I might as well get a custom paint job because I've seen something on Instagram that was badass. I just need to have that. Or that some people will build a bike around a paint job. Like I want, I need a, I need a low rider motorcycle. So literally they're like, this is what I want the paint to look like. And then they're building the rest of the bike to look, you know, similar to like a, what, you know, they're doing fishtails and stuff like that. This kind of a paint job. I get hit up all the time about work. Um, I can't take on the jobs like I used to, cause I'm doing all this now, but there's a lot of work out there and there's, you put the, you put the effort into it. Yeah. 
Yeah, hundred percent. If you love it, do it. Make it work one way or another. Just make it work. Hustle. Uh, yeah, try not to paint stuff for free unless you're brand new. To still charge something, or even if it's like materials plus some a little bit to be able to to have materials for like the next paying job or something like that, or you know enough materials to be able to practice a little bit more or to or you know. A, a job that'll pay for your all your leafing supplies that that you'll be able to leaf you know another ten bikes with. You you work it out that way at first, and then then you start making some money. Um, you start you know, custom paint jobs range from a tank and two fenders would be fifteen hundred bucks all the way up to, uh, you know five thousand dollars. Kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, if you're doing leaf and stuff like this, definitely you should be charging a premium. I know we've talked about it before, but if you're doing leaf now, you've been a custom painter, don't include it. Make sure it's like some kind of an upcharge because it does take more materials. It does cost more money. And you have learned a skill that a lot of people have not perfected because it's not an easy thing to do. Leafing is definitely uh, one of the more advanced skills of custom painting. So if you can learn it, make sure you're getting paid for it. So it's very, very important on that. So he said, I just left some Amazon reviews. Oh, yes. Always do that. Thank you so much. Like I said, the Amazon is like the, probably the best thing, especially if you're leaving photo reviews. So those are killer because um, it helps people out and it gets to show you, you get to show your work on there. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That means a lot. It really does. And getting the full experience if the artist doesn't grunt like a gym rat after every line. <laughs> getting a tattoo. Oh, yeah. And says, no tats here. They're all sweating from his forehead. <sighs> okay. All right. You ask, what PSI do you use on the Iwata airbrush? Uh, when spraying the glue, I usually stick around uh, 15, 18%. Oh, no. <laughs> 18 PSI. Uh, that, that's that's a good starting pressure i use for just about everything everything's like 18 psi unless i'm doing detail i'm gonna um, bump it down and then thin my paint out more and jeremy said that he's kind of told them what he charges mr she said they see what's possible and then someone else said yeah the west coast style is everywhere right now and it's a lot of time too yeah well to be honest with you the the leafing not the leafing the uh, metal flake and the candy paint jobs compared to like the paint jobs of the 2000s and the early 2000s and the 90s were like fire and skulls and murals it took a lot more time in order to get those things finished man i can bust through a, a flake job quick even though it looks like it's time consuming it's actually one of the quicker things and it looks so good when it's done. Like you can tell somebody put a bunch of money into it because it's, it's candy paint. It's sparkly. It's metallic. It's amazing. You know, especially when you're inlaying leaf and stuff like that. Some people don't see it in real life. And then they're like, holy crap. So that's, you know, what it is. Is there still a demand for leafing or does it come and go as a trend? Uh, I would say it, it has come back full force, but yeah come and go i think it may have came and then gone and then came back yes. and then i couldn't imagine it going anywhere for a very very long time it's such a cool thing it's such a cool way to like to uh take your skill to the next level because if you can leave even if you can't pinstripe you don't need to with this stuff you don't need to pinstripe your edges we're gonna get these things super crisp i don't pinstripe i don't know really how ashley does right as well as i know my spanish <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> i'm learning i'm <laughs> learning okay all right we got a couple coats on there right now we go with another one josh said one tip on job pricing i always figure every job as 
if I need every supply. No, I have left over this or that. I feel that way. I try to be even there. That way I value every supply. Yeah. Yep. That's a great way to do it. If I do it, usually on mine, I wouldn't, I never really added up the price of anything. I think maybe at first I did do that. And then after a while, my pricing was this much money to start. And then if you wanted like other things, um, then you, there could be some charges there. You know, if you wanted leafing or if you wanted, um, sometimes you could always like, Hey, I can throw on an extra three coats of clear on this if you can if you feel that they have maybe a bigger budget than than what um, you first quoted out to them. So remember the upcharges that you can. I mean, you don't want to like upcharge them to where it's not fair. You know, you don't want to upcharge them and then not know about it. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, you don't want to do that. You want to like you get the feel for your your customer and how much they're willing to spend, and then you can kind of cater to that. Don't sell yourself short. Always leave the door open for um, for uh, things that could take more time, causing more money. Uh, so, you know, always give a, a price quote, even though some customers consider a price quote to be a firm quote, which is weird. I need some more glue, which is weird because a quote is a quote. I've never known a quote not to be. Uh, like a firm kind of thing, but they do think that. So make sure you leave the door open for uh, a little, you know, little wiggle room. There you go. Wiggle room. That's it. Did you come up with that or somebody? I just said it. You said it? That was beautiful. Roman said, did I miss what happened to the Harbor Freight Air Express? Uh, I still have it. Yeah. I had to actually exchange it for a new one. The spring issue I had, it didn't go away. Um, and also I think I may have, uh, broke the seal in it and it caused it to leak. So I don't know what I did. I messed it up. So I went and got a new one and they gave me one for free. So I'm on round two of the Harbor Freight airbrush, but I feel like that may have been my fault of breaking that airbrush, which in that case, should I have taken it back? I don't know. I don't know. They said 90 day warranty. Well, Jeremy said, I usually see the value in extra work because it ends up looking amazing. Yeah. And that is true because there are lots of customers, too, that will give you tips, or used to, and they'll give you tips at the end, like, oh, my gosh, man. Really appreciate it, and you turn out like that. So. Yeah, I have. A nice surprise, too. Yeah, I have gotten tips, but not as many as you would think. Like, you know how, like, tattoo artists get tips? It's not even close to being not like that. you. You hurt. You don't get a tip. Yeah, I know. Too well, no, I don't. Hell no. I got to live with that blob on my foot for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's supposed to be a star. I sweated on this a little bit. There's a little bit of water in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm going to put the last coat on this to make sure it's nice and even. But even then, we're still going to double leaf this. So when the guy at the dealer roll, rolls in on a dyna with custom painted FXR fairing, lowers tanks, bags, and fenders, saying his paint job alone was 20 days, he's not full of shit. Yeah, he's full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> they always do that, too. God, they always... You know what the worst is? And I'm not going to... I don't really like to complain about customers. But the worst is, is when they come in with their $20,000 rims... And then you give him a, you know, like a $10,000 quote for his bagger paint, which is good. That's a good, that's a good quote. Then he has a problem with it, but he just got done spending 20 grand on his damn rims. But yeah, most people I've noticed when they talk about motorcycle paint and how much they pay for something, they're usually full of shit. Like they're always like, this is how much it would have been, but I got hooked up. Everybody gets hooked up, you know. But no, I don't like talking crap, but that's just the way it is. And who cares? If they want to go around and say it's twenty thousand and they're saying your job's twenty thousand, maybe the next guy's expecting to pay twenty thousand. Okay, we're good. Leaf time.
We got the silver leaf here. Can anyone make. else give a quote good to date because availability and cost increases? Uh, they should be good because unless you're like taking a year to finish it. But yeah, always leave the like I said, always leave the door open if like prices of, of stuff goes up. And then always be transparent to the customer as soon as you know the price is going to be more. I, that's uh, some advice I could say because it's one thing when the price is more. It's another thing when you don't tell them and then you tell them at the very end they get pissed. <laughs> I can understand why, you know, but. Or I remember so, um, sometimes you quote a customer something and then they told oh. you what you want, they wanted. And then all of a sudden it was this and this and this and this and this added. And then you told them the price change and then they got mad. Yes. Oh, yeah. They'll bring more parts. Yeah, they'll like send you more parts or they'll bring in more parts than what they said. Yeah, when you quote something, you don't quote a motorcycle. Like, oh, I got a Dyna. Uh, you know, so yeah, I paint Dynas for, you know, for 3000 bucks. Tank fender, two side covers. That's what you're thinking, you know. And then he has a fairing. And then he has leg fairings. And then he has saddle bags. And then all of a sudden this $3,000 job. Ooh, what happened there? The three thousand dollar job turned into like a seven thousand dollar job, or more, because the fairings like as much work as the tank and the back fender. Yeah. So how does that work? And they don't understand that. They're like, "Oh, it's just a it's just a fairing, and you're already painting the other parts." So it's like, while you're at it, why don't we go ahead and throw this fairing in? <laughs> and it shouldn't be that much, you know. He's already doing it, but you don't even know. Like, oh my. In order to cut and buff one of those fairings, it's a freaking nightmare. It's a literally a nightmare. And that's to, even some guys don't even want to do it anymore. Like myself, I just won't do big jobs like that anymore because it's just not, I, I find them to be less profitable because they're stuck around for so long. And when you get paid, it's the payday is good, but uh, it's a long time coming because it takes a lot of work to get to that point. And you usually get sick of it. Like a bagger, you're usually sick of the bag. So sick of the bag by the time you're done. If you're not, God bless you. Because <laughs> I have a lot of patience, but man, that pushes my limits sometimes. <laughs> Patrick said, pain is not a cheap commodity. Oh, no. There's not very many people that can do it very good. So keep that in mind. If you've learned this skill and you've spent the time, just like anybody else has spent the time, gone to school, you know. Too. Yeah, you can you can put really any price tag you want on it. Yeah. Like a Gucci water bottle should be how much in Gucci money? Like if that was a real Gucci. Uh, Louis Vuitton. Louis oh Vuitton. oh oh Louis Vuitton. So if it was Louis Vuitton. Oh no, pay me one, I'll see. <laughs> yeah. Go go in there. How much is this? Where we should have took it to New York when we went, right? Crazy one, and I'll I'll let you know how many compliments I get, and I'll tell you how much it's worth. <laughs> yeah. He said. He said his gold leading was 24 karat. Don't get me wrong. It's a nice bike, but it just seems like a lot. Yeah. And there's probably a good chance his gold leaf wasn't 24 karat if it was spun because that doesn't spin worth a crap. At least I never could. If it was uh, real gold or real silver, silver, this is actually aluminum. The Supreme the sticker is worth at least 3K, he said. The what? <laughs> the Supreme sticker. <laughs> What do you think your most expensive job was? Uh, what was my ex most expensive job? Counting bikes, not cars. Right? Well, the cars, the cars I uh, that I painted has only been my own cars. No. Huh? Oh, besides that one with the hood, the roof. I did the roof of that car, but that was that was already flaked. All I had to do was go in and do the graphics, so I, you couldn't even count that as painting a car. And I don't think I cleared it. Like I literally just went and did the graphics and it was out in day. Um, but what's my biggest payday? Huh? I can't remember. Uh, I know I did get a uh, $1,500 tip. And I, did, I, I do say you don't get tips very often. But I did have a dude gave me a $1,500 tip. And then I had another dude give me a a thousand dollar tip i think i had so i've had one fifteen hundred dollar tip and a thousand dollar tip and then other than that i may have had like twenty dollar tips maybe five in, in my 20 years other than that there's 
not really. What was your most expensive job that you told someone it would cost? Uh, it was a bagger, and I think it was uh, 9000 but that was back in like 2012 or something. What's going on here? What is this? Did I just leave it this all just sitting there? Huh. <laughs> this thing didn't look right. Yeah, I think, what did I say, 9000 Yeah, I think it was 9000 about right. So that was a long time ago. I think that same job would have been more. And what, I think it was like a, it had a lot of airbrushing. Uh, said, I sold the bike a while back. I painted, then it came back up for sale, same fresh $5,000. <laughs> Some paint. <laughs> <laughs> Brand new, and it's like freaking 15 years old or something. That's good, though. If they, they can still pass it off as being new. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Cheap working good and good working cheap. Mm -mm. Jeremy said, I did my brother's bagger. I don't want to do another one. It took forever. Halfway through, you're thinking about all your other projects. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, my gosh. And then you get to the point where you get one part all the way done. You're like, okay, now I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's hard when you have all of it, like, in, in process. So I did three bags in a row, and the last one had like 32 pieces. I was so ready to do some sculptures and dinos. <laughs> yep. Yep. If I did a bagger, my next three were like regular tank and fenders. Are you good at freehand with the airbrush? Patrick said. Uh, nice work, man. Yeah, I uh, I consider myself pretty good at freehand. Um, I I actually practiced straight up freehand airbrushing for I think every morning for an hour for six months straight. I did just whatever like came to my mind or whatever I could find a picture of, and I would just match it, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, I got to learn in the shapes, the negative space, finding the shades, the darks, and the lights. I feel like I learned a lot in those six months when I was doing that. So I feel like I'm pretty good at it. I couldn't do like, I wouldn't like paint anything for anybody where I didn't like uh, create a stencil really because the results are faster and better. But there's something about just freehand airbrushing, taking nothing into something and building it up. And I just, it's just really fun. I just don't do it enough to be that good at it. But I can do it because I practiced a little bit. Uh, Cal, who said he painted three baggers in a row, and the last one had 30 pieces. He said the last bagger has won three first place trophies around the country in the last couple months, though. So that's satisfying. Wow. Yeah. That's every once in a while I'll get that too. Somebody will send me a picture of something that may have won. But yeah, you get kind of immune to it too. People will be like, oh, you're a good painter. But then. I don't know, it's just paint, really. I don't know, it's not that important. But it's cool to be good at something, I guess. That is that is the good thing. Swampy said, my stuff is garage kit. Yes, it looks good for a long time. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and double leaf this, like I said. So when I, when I say double leaf, I'm literally going to lay down another round of glue once you do the second coat it's a little bit harder to see your glue so you have to really stay um, mindful and organized on exactly how much and where you're spraying And I tell my kid all the time, I don't care what you do, just pick one thing you like and do the best you can do at doing it. Yes, that is. That's yeah, that's get good at something. Get good at something that you love to do. That's yeah. if you can do that, and it's not going to happen overnight because I think a lot of kids want it to happen overnight, like yeah, instant thing. Being instant for them. But they don't know the people that are winning right now that they've been doing it for five years. Like 
or 10 years or however long behind the scenes. You just don't see that. So they kind of expect it to happen quicker. But yeah, it's, that's a great thing. Get good at something. And if, and if you love it, what a bonus. You always have to have some kind of hustle behind it, though, too. That's, a, I think, a secret. You have to have the hustle. Yeah, you do. You can't be lazy about it. Patrick said, kids give up as soon as it takes any anything named work. <laughs> yeah, or like, how long is this going to take? <laughs> That's the next thing. Like, wait a minute. You can literally tell them you're going on vacation and, like, to somewhere amazing. And then you tell them, like, oh, it's not until next month. Oh, man, like, I don't care now. <laughs> it's like, well, you get to go in a month. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, tell me in a month. Instant Thanks. instant gratification. But, you know, maybe the kids will break from it. They're going to have to. It seems to be like Christmas when you unwrap it. Do you have a picture in your head, or is it a surprise for you, too? Uh, I know what it's going to look like, yeah. It's going to look. About the same with some leaf on it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> when you do projects like this, oh, I gotcha. So I'm the idiot. I was, okay, no, uh, um, yeah, well, no, I don't really. That's uh, usually I kind of have an idea what I'm gonna do, and then um, I just kind of follow like follow the contour with the with the tape, follow the shape. Um, but yeah, this one, I kind of knew, I kind of knew exactly what it was going to look like. I didn't know all the colors and where I was going to put them, but yeah, I've done this before. The same, but just more. Yeah. What's the reason for doing the second layer? Uh, so we're going to spin this with a 5,000 grit spinner with it's just a 5,000 grit pad on a spinner. Um, and it's going to, uh, prevent most likely prevent any kind of burn through um, if that happens to happen when you go to spin it, like if you have imperfections and contamination, obviously you could still have some problems with burn through. Also, if you're not pressing down your edges good enough, CYA, right? CYA. You know what that means? No, I have no clue. Cover your ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh I have no clue. Are you come? Are you coming up with all this stuff? Is that you? CYA has <laughs> been around for a while, bud. What the hell? Huh. Well, I don't know that. I don't know your slang. CYA, cover nope. your ass. You haven't heard of that. Mm -mm. No. Is that like a texting thing? Lord, no. What was before texting? <laughs> Forty years under the welding hood here, Swampy says. Now, Swampy, tell me you've heard of CYA. Forty years under the welding. Well, he's had forty years of some. He knows what that is. <laughs> Why don't you? <laughs> I just made that up. Oh, I was impressed, actually. Well, don't. Yeah, I didn't make that up. You're just those. slinging out acronyms like crazy. Like, I thought you are just like. No, I'll take it. I think it's great. Yeah. I'd like to cover my ass with doing two, two sheets. I think that's a great idea. Because you're already here. You already have it taped up. Um, if you have a little problems on the edges, it'll take care of that as well. And then it's, it's really not that much work or materials. Just going to. And what, maybe another 10 minutes. So no big deal. It's something you can't, you, as far as I know, it's something you cannot do um, with the conventional method of laying down sizing glue because it's laid down with a, with a brush and it's laid down like kind of thick, you know? So you're going to have a paint edge and doubling that up can cause like some problems. Doesn't that take a really long time to dry too? So you'd be here for like half a day. Yeah, it takes like half an hour, I think. It depends on, like everything, it depends on um, the humidity and the, and the temperature and all that other stuff. I need to make sure I get that in that corner really good because I noticed right here it was a little crappy. CYA. CYA, that's why we're doing this. <laughs> He said, yes, he knows Swampy. He knew about. it. Come on, bruh. <laughs> I knew Swampy knew it. 
We got it. We got it. I think we're we're there. Okay. So one thing I didn't mention on the last one. Where's my brush at? So yeah, I'm gonna pat this down. I'm going straight down on it. Rather than brushing it, like because they meet right there. Pat, 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 pat. Spank it. Yo. Spank, 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 spank. That's way better than pat. Spank, spank, spank. You know, spank that down. Just where they meet, because we're not not wanting to wipe away the two layers away from each other. We want them to stick straight down. I had a GC ask me for a CYA in an email. He meant COI. That's how I learned about it. COI is Certificate of Insurance. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Did you ever see the message on Instagram that showed the speaker box? Uh, I have to remember what it's painted like. Yeah, I did see a speaker box. What's it painted like, Ray? I think I did see a speaker box. <laughs> I have silver all on your floor. I do. It, uh, it's hot. It's gotten hot in here all of a sudden. I'm it's like you're going to Taylor Swift's concert. <laughs> all the, the, that on your forehead. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's literally like a. <laughs> Is it that bad? It's like a line of leaf. It goes like this far. Look. It's on your forehead. <laughs> oh, everything's sticking to me. I'm so clammy right now. He said it had the big skull. Oh, yeah. I was going to say skull, but I didn't want to sound like an idiot. And say, oh, yeah, it was a skull. No, I did. Um, I can't remember what color it was. I can't. Yeah, I remember seeing that. That was awesome. I can't really remember the details, though. But I remember going, ooh. Damn. I think I've done that a couple of times today with some stuff. No, there's a lot of people getting good. This isn't really that hard to do. That line's not the cleanest right there, but we're going to live with it. I can show you what it looks like when it's not that good. But once again, the more you work these edges down, the better uh, connection you're going to get with the glue, and it's going to cause a uh, cleaner line, a cleaner break. Because you really need that... You don't want it to bridge over the tape. You want it to, to really be tucked in, basically just tuck it in your edges. See right here, you know, same thing, just bring them. Make sure those bristles get up in there. If you don't do this, it's gonna pull that edge and it's just gonna make it all jagged. Trying to get out of it now with custom painting. Well, you might be able to retire into it, sounds like. Yeah, you're doing it. That's all that matters. TV, yeah, tap can... it down. I've actually talked to a few people that have uh, made this a, like a retirement thing. You make some money off of it. And plus, it's, it's a really enjoyable thing to do. Like, if you love to do it, why not do it and get paid? Especially if you can just like maybe keep it down to like one one bike a month or something or one bike every couple of months you look like a tin man after this. <laughs> i feel like it. i'm so clammy right now okay i'm uh we're getting ready to spin this so normally i would pull the tape and spin it and the reason why i do that is because a couple of things when you spin it with the tape on your spinner can pick up little pieces of whatever it is and it could um break into your leafing you know we're double leaf so we do have an extra layer of protection there um do you have any ideas about the adhesion problem with that speaker oh uh i have to see what layer it came off of like what he ought to send, send that to me again on Instagram, and I'll take a look at it. Did, did I not? I don't know. Maybe you just didn't reply. Maybe I didn't reply. Damn it. 
I don't know. Okay, let's grab the spinner. Danny says, been using Limeline products for a few months now and been really impressed. Stoked the candies are available. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate you supporting our brand for sure. Okay, so I'm gonna, it doesn't matter where you start and it doesn't matter when you actually start doing this. Um, but you do want about a 40% overlap or so or whatever you want. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You just do. Look how nice that spin looked. First one. Oh, wow. I love this part. Brian says, I've been using razor blade before I peeled the tape on the edges for a nice clean line. I've tried the roller and just the brush and my lines aren't as clean. I don't know why, but it always wants to peel. Yeah, I mean, you just have to really work those edges. But I think you're, you're onto something good there with tucking in your edges with a with a blade, especially if you're going to use like a plastic blade or something. Mark says, my motorcycle wants those. <laughs> Please. It's an upgrade, man. I can't do this for the same price. <laughs> I got to order me some candy black. I love that stuff, said Patrick. Smash the like button. Hit that like button. We're not sure how many likes we got right now because Thanks, we're swampy. streaming on a different platform, but... But thanks for always having our back. Yep. Do people only spin leaf or do you see block designs or what have you? Could could be cool to have straight lines and then candy over or would that not? Not or would that not the way I think? Not no. Way I think. No, you're on to something with that as well. There is another uh, YouTube channel. You can check them out on here on YouTube. Uh, Brush Strokes, I think, is his handle. But he does, I think he actually has a stencil out that makes the cubes. I watched that and it's actually a really smart idea. So he, he has those and you can, um, and I've been meaning to kind of experiment with some more stuff myself, but you can definitely, uh, you could do a basket weave. We've talked about that before. Um, he did blocks. They looked incredible. The, the cubes, I'd call them more cubes than blocks, but um they had a lot of the 3d effect it was really amazing very well done um but he has a set of stencils that you can like lay down in a certain uh in a uh, certain pattern not certain pattern was in a, in a certain layering process where you do one and then the other someone said that squeaks is kill me <laughs> he usually doesn't squeak this bad i wonder if it's the tape yeah it is squeaking I know, I heard it too. Like, Whoa, dang. See if I can make it worse for you. Oh, yeah. Cal says, also big props to you for doing all of these videos and how-tos over the years. You painted my little bros. Lives up in Ogden. Really? He did his bike a few years ago. That pushed me to up my paint game. Yeah, badass. Yeah, that's cool. Um, it's not that hard to get into, like we talked about before. Do you get a couple under your belt? You understand how to fix your mistakes. And if you don't, find somebody that can help you. Yeah. How hard are you pushing? Just kidding. I'm actually pushing pretty hard, harder than <laughs> the usual. It's because I'm not used to spinning with uh, the tape on. Is that why it's that horrendous sound? Yeah, I think that's part of that. Oh. It actually wears out your 3000 pad more by because it's running up against the edges. This is, it's better. It's always better, I feel like, to pull. But we're going to be putting some candy on the top of this. So we want to leave it. We don't want to retape it back out. We're wanting to do it all in one shot here. Even though, even though if you, if this was a bike, there's a good chance that I would, uh, would have pulled the tape, would have spun it, put it into clear coat, taped it back up, and then shot that candy over the top. I mean, you could always do that. Damn, that was a horrible spin right there. Well, he said, yeah, that's what I'm doing is side... Uh, side hustle hobby shop and someone else Cal said quit my oil field job and open up my own shop and doing this stuff going on three years strong yeah badass that's yeah, great to hear that's my dream he's working towards it yeah one day you're just gonna have to do it Get you. <laughs> oh freak I know it's killing my ears too yeah we're almost done listen to this one Someone says, it looks like mini DVDs. Ooh. I'm trying to talk over that sound, and you're trying to get me to be quiet. <laughs> it's killing my ears. Is this easier to spin by hand or with a with a drill? 
I prefer doing it by hand. With a frill. <laughs> I like the first way frill. <laughs> yeah, I like to do it by hand. That was a terrible spin. I was all over the place. Uh, I feel like you have more control, less chance of burn through. But um, some people use the drill and it looks amazing too. So it doesn't mean that either way it's going to work. As you can see, this is spun pretty good. Those things are, this is turning out really good. I am not, not happy with this. In fact, we call that spin look jeweling when done on oh. parts of firearms. It's done to hold oil and reduce friction. Wow. It makes a lot of gas dang friction because I can hear it squeaking. I have, I have heard of that, it, jeweling it. Yep. That's just a uh, refresh my memory. I've heard of that a couple of times. I would actually wouldn't mind actually using that term. We're gonna jewel this right now. It's like this. your forehead is jeweled. Is it? Yeah, I told you that. You look like John T. Swift concert. <laughs> well, I'm not. Dang it. We are <clears throat> went. All right. Um, we're good. We're gonna go ahead and mix up some green, some green candy. We're gonna put candy over this transparent color over this so we can make a green spun silver leaf. How's that sound? Sounds, green. Sounds good. Well, we're getting close to being done here. So y'all can maybe I'll go to bed here pretty soon. All right. We're going to mix this up. We got some clear base coat because once again, it is uh, the candies are a concentrate. What the hell am I doing here? Let's get into this. The candies are a concentrate, so they need to be mixed with a clear base coat or also known as an inner coat clear. Basically, it's a clear base coat. It's going to act as a base coat. It's going to dry fast. Um, it's just one part. So clear base coat here. Can you mix the candies to make like a purple? Yep. You would just mix uh, red and blue together at a 50-50 mixture after you put the, uh, the uh, clear and base coat in there. Curious about the hue of black candy. I've used some with a bluish hue, but looking for something with more of a brown or gold hue to it. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, this is more of a, and I know what you're talking about. They're usually blue or purple. They kind of look like like a deep purple sometimes. This is a black. Um, I wouldn't call it brown. If you wanted a, if you wanted your black black to be a little bit of a brown or a gold hue, I would take the black and put a drop of each color, red, blue, gold, just one drop of each in there, maybe two of the gold, two drops, and that will warm up that black into that shade. Because since it is a transparent, you're able to um, still tint that black. All right, so I put some clear base coat in there. That should be enough. Roman gave you a $20 super chat and said, thanks, Teach. Woo! Patrick said, oh, that clear is thick. He is thick, huh? All right, we got some blue. Oh, check this out right here. You're asking, how do you make green? Well, you just mix some yellow, some blue, you make the green. Here's the clear base coat right here. So it's going to tell you the directions right there. We're not going to get too much into it. Um, but that should do it for that. Now, none of these are really hard rules. We're just kind of... It's not like a part A and part B kind of a thing to where it needs to harden. We're just tinting stuff. So we can always add more, add less, or do whatever. So we got the blue in there. Since yellow is a uh, not as strong of a color, we're going to need a little bit more of it. I'm not sure how much more, but maybe that much. Someone said, I'd like to watch you do a 3D, 3D skull on something so they could learn something. You think you could do that? Oh, I've never done that, actually. A 3D skull. If, if he's talking about, like, real 3D. Patrick said, I love the black candy. Danny says, he's ordering it now. Oh, thank you. Finally sell one. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> we sold a lot. <laughs> yes, we got one. Finally. <laughs> We're all watching the computer, see if it goes through. <laughs> Wait a minute. No. No, there's, so there's the green. Isn't that magic? You can even see the little bit of the gold on the side there. It looks like a good green, right? I'm also just going to, like we talked about earlier, I'm going to aim for the edges, blending into the center, and I'm going to hit it with a gold afterwards. So that way we can kind of tint this green more towards the gold side and the center and still have that blend. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and add some urethane reducer. About a one-to-one -one mixture. And then once you like, once you get going a little bit more in custom painting, you're gonna be able to get your um, thinning mixtures down easier because you're gonna be able just to mix it and look, and you're gonna be able to like, you be able to tell if it's too thin or too thick. Just pay attention when you're new. Pay attention to how, you know, how things work when, um, you know, the the pressure and the thickness of the paint is different because those two things. I can't stress that enough. How relevant air pressure and the thickness of whatever you're spraying um how how that goes together like if it's thick you need more pressure if it's thin you need less pressure so does that make sense i mean you'd have to actually do it and it would make complete sense if you were to try it all right so i'm going to take this airbrush yes Boom. their base coat is the same as mine yes that is correct where's my airbrush okay we are back we have the harbor freight airbrush this is the new one i got we're gonna plug that baby back in we do have this neat little connector here you switch airbrushes and it cuts off your line your air see and then you can adjust right there as well okay i got some red it looks like in here i just kind of just guess i just left my paint in there oh yeah red candy let's get rid of that Okay, we got rid of the, the red candy. Let's go ahead and pour in some green. That should be enough. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Let's, uh, I ain't even gonna say it. I'm gonna blow this off. <laughs> Our reducers from different manufacturers interchangeable. Uh, yes. Yep. In the most all cases, I think I got a hair right there. Nothing I can do about that. Um, in almost all cases, I think there's a DuPont or something that has some kind of a weird reducer that they need. But yeah, urethane reducer, urethane grade reducer should work on any uh, kind of urethane paints. So it's going to work in your primers, in your base coats, in your clear coats if you need to thin them down a little bit kind of a universal kind of thing hence the name I gambled it oh get out of there Apple. Yeah, you see how I'm just hitting the edges and letting it fade into the center? So the green's just blue and gold candy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, magic, right? Magic. So that's all you need, really. So all you need is the green, all you need is the blue, excuse me, the blue, the red, and the gold, yellow, to make the, the green, the purple, and the orange. And you can make it the darker green, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can change the, it is it is a, um, you can make it darker in a couple of different ways. It's transparent, so you can add more coats, which is going to darken it up. Or you can actually darken up the mixture itself by adding more candy, which is a concentrate, into the clear coat mixture. Because there is, really is no hard rules with that. I mean, you, you don't want to spray the candy straight. You don't want to reduce it and spray it straight. It's just, you could have some adhesion problems with that because... You know, base clear base coat, inner coat clear is also known as binder, which it binds things together. So you need that portion in that mixture to make sure everything is going to stay solid and is going to stick. I ran out. Oh, no, I didn't. Don't forget, you have the black candy, they said, too. Yeah, the black. the black candy, yep. And the black candy, 
you know, the black candy is kind of used by itself mostly, you know, you, I, uh, unless you're mixing it into a brown, I wouldn't like, if you want to make a candy color darker, like a darker purple, I wouldn't add black to the mixture. I would uh, just make the mixture darker. I'm just saying, you said all the cup candy colors, and they were just saying, and you have black. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Both. And the blacks, yeah, the black is a game changer, for sure. Yeah, they're, they're definitely worth it. I think they're only 13 bucks right now. Jeremy said, goddamn wizard. If you were to do a gold center and fade green on the sides, would you lay the gold or the green first? Oh, great question. I'm, uh, and that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, layer gold, but I'm going to do it on top. So you're going to start with your darker candies, and usually they're going to be the ones you edge with. And then you can um, use the lighter candies overall over the whole top of it. So like when I go to spray the gold candy on top of this, I could literally just spray the whole thing. You know, you could spray right over the green and it's only going to change it slightly. Such a lovely shade of green. <laughs> the girls would love it, huh? Yeah. Well, because I like that. Yeah, I figured green. I haven't done green like ever on leaf, so now's the time. All right, I'm just going to hit this a little bit on this side or I missed a little bit. And I think I'm going to hit that with the gold. So set that off to the side. We got the straight gold here. Would it mess, mm. Would it mess things up if you use the water-based candy on top of your thing paint? You're, you're not going to have the... Uh, the the water-based candies don't really work as well, um, unfortunately. And they kind of never have. They're better than they used to be. Um, so you may run into some problems with that. I would probably, that sounds like that could be problems, but it also sounds like you can make that work. So sure you can question. take that either way. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, it's like, that's like, that's like living on the edge, buddy. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know how it goes. All right. So we're going to do some clear base coat. It's better to stick unless you have to, it's better to stick with the same, the same products all the way through, but doesn't mean you can't. We're breaking a lot of rules. Pretty much all we're doing is breaking one rule after another with this stuff. It looks like an eyeball. Yeah. In that cup. Uh oh. Looks like an eyeball. Wow. Taking it out of someone's eyes and clean. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay, we're gonna thin this out. So it's too thick. You can see it. Let me. Get, you guys can get an idea. You can see how thick. It's like. Oh, you can't even see. Syrup. Not that thick. Yeah, it's kind of like syrup, kind of like maple syrup. That's way too thick. That's about how it's going to um, first mix together. We're going to throw some urethane reducer to thin it out. So now we're like drippy. Now we're more like thicker than water. What's thicker than water? Kool-Aid? No, nah, I think Kool-Aid's like water. Um, hmm. It's like a melted popsicle. You know how they're a little thicker? I don't know. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's just a little thicker. It's a little thicker than water. I guess that's the best way to explain it. A little thicker than water. We're going to pump a little bit of through this. Make sure it's gold. Oh, yeah. I've always heard it called thin as milk. Thin as milk. Yeah, because milk's not really like, I like that too. I'll have to test that theory though. Is it as thin as milk? That's about what the uh, sizing glue is though, I would say. Like milk? Like milk. Thin as milk. I'm going to use some of this terminology I'm getting tonight. <laughs> I'm getting very, very smart. Cement is also thicker than water. Cement? <laughs> <laughs> I did stay with all the base here. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I used to use Pretext illustration 
wicked and can be too. I flip the earth thing and never look back. Yeah, I think once you go, it's it's hard to get. It's it works so well. So you can see that I'm just kind of spraying this over the whole area, and it's tinting the middle more gold because we blend we blend it into the center. So the the edges just have the green blending into the center, giving it that nice uh, kind of a faded look. Okay, I think we got it. We don't want to oversaturate it too much because that could happen and then we could pull our tape and then we could have some paint pill issues that way as well. And if you don't know how that happens, what what episode we had a problem? Somewhere, the toaster. Watch the toaster. Problems happened with the toaster. Well, got in a hurry. But I still fixed it afterwards, so no big deal. You know, anything can really be fixed. This is how much work is going to take. Someone said those spins earlier look like mini DVDs. Well, now they look even more like it right there. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how we're going to turn out here. I can't wait to see this beast get unwrapped. That candy green would be my night. All right. It's going to be crazy with this orange, orange is copper variegated leaf we have here. And the blanket in the middle. We all forgot what that looks like. It's been so long. It's been what? How many? Two hours, huh? Well, here it is, like Christmas. Almost two hours. We got it on the money. Can you speed dry with a heat gun? Or do you, or do these paints not work that way? Uh, These paints really don't work that way. I think speed drying with a heat gun would be more if you're using water base because water base is going to take a lot more patience and more coats and more dry times because it just that water needs to evaporate it takes longer solvents they just evaporate really quick so never have i ever really um heated anything up to to speed it up besides if you're like uh, in a paint booth don't do that yeah don't do that not do that Water in with, with water base, it's actually kind of a normal thing. I think they even have like hair dryer things to, to speed up that process. So you got the painters in there in production shops with hair dryers, it's trying to speed up that the dry times on those. No paint peeling. That's a good sign. Not too wet. No problems tonight. Well, we'll see. Water-based candies don't fade. They don't? How is that? How if is it's that? thin enough, it is damn near dry when it takes to work. No crying over spilled milk. <laughs> Think of that when you spray it. 100% agree. Started using solvent base and couldn't believe the difference. Way smoother blending and shading also. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the way it flows is a big difference. The way it dries and the way it flows. Because you can get some nice blends because they're going to blend into the other paint. Um, like we did here. You know, with the water base, things kind of stay wet longer act a lot different. Oh. Oh. Ooh, I talked too soon. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab a razor blade. Man, I thought I was all good, and I'm all talking of and stuff, and what did I do? I pill it. Yeah, I waited. A, that was, that's looking all right. We're not here. We're not looking all right. I'm going to go ahead and pull that, and we're going to go ahead and work this from a different edge. I'm going to be a little more careful about how exactly I pull this tape off. Um, really, I should be waiting at least another 10 minutes, but. We're going to slow this process down a little bit and I'll make sure I'm pulling this in the right direction. Have <laughs> we, have, we have a problem. 
Nobody saw that. <laughs> we'll address that. I think we'll be able to take care of it. Well, you don't need to go watch the toaster video. Nope. Stay right here. Stay right here. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fix it a hundred percent. Like usually, at that case, in that in that with that kind of problem, it would need to be recleared and touched up to be able to fix it to where it's you know flawless. But I'm going to be able to fix it up a little bit, hopefully, and then um, in that next go around, I'll be able to to tidy it up. So said, man, that's freaking sick. And Jeremy said, what happened? Nothing to see here. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of got crazy pulling that tape. I just, uh... well, actually, you know what happened is it, is it found the edge of the other tape. And then I wasn't realizing that it was going to pull the actual edge. So I'm going to. Uh... Go ahead and just bullet hole. No, nah, I can't do it. Bullet hole's not gonna work there. Wish it could. Something uh yeah, it would definitely have to be re-cleared at that point. But like I said, I'm gonna be able to fix that up a little bit. But let me take care of these other these other areas. It's hard to kind of see because the chat is kind of hiding it. So <laughs> Oh yeah, so it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, it kind of looks fine to me. <laughs> Don't really see it. <laughs> Getting a clean line on that leaf. That's good. You sweat on it again? No, oh, I think that's about where I did sweat on it, but it's definitely warming up in here now. This edge right there, I taped it up kind of funny, and that was the edge I was talking about earlier to where it could have been a little cleaner. Um, I taped that up kind of funky. It was super thick right there. I don't know what I was doing. Someone said, imagine if that was your fender, it would be so dope. Scott said, put your autograph there. Hey, there you go. That's good thinking. You literally could. You could. But I'm uh we're gonna be able to fix it. Um you're barely even gonna be able to tell. You go out of the scene over there. Screen. Yeah. Nothing a pinstripe can't fix. Yep, if you do that kind of thing. That'd be a pretty thick pinstripe, though. But yeah, true. You can do slash pinstriping on this and put a slash mark right through that. All right, we're almost there. Let's go ahead and pull. The five P's, Adam. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> I'm learning so much. <laughs> These acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> it still looks good, even with that blip. Yeah, we're going to hide it somewhat. Where is my edge here? I think we're right here. Is the edge. Okay, once again, I'm pulling away from the candy line. We're not pulling into it. We're not pulling this way. We're pulling out this way. Very, very important. Because I just got done blasting all that candy on there, and it was still a little, like... It wasn't wet, but it's still like a little rubbery, I guess the best way I can say. And then when you go to pull that and you pull it this way, it's going to, it's bridged over here thick and it's just going to, it's going to pull it. It may or it may not. Sometimes, it, you know, mistakes happen. You just have to be aware of what's going on and how to fix it. To fix yeah, you really got to know how to fix them because you're going to have mistakes. Like, it's going to happen. I, I make mistakes all the time. Just like today. All right, let's pull this one. That leaf's turning out great, though. I'm really happy with that. That was just one layer, too, so looking good. Okay. What is that? Okay, let's make sure. I'm going to run my finger across this. 
We're going to get rid of air, anything that's loose. Let me, uh, let me grab my brush. There it is right there. Let's see if I can take care of this. I probably shouldn't be. I actually scratched that with my finger now. Jeez. And if I would have used the brush to start, I actually wouldn't have scratched that a couple of times. But we're laying leaf on this. It's going to be all right. We will quickly grab some tape. We're going to come out here a little bit farther. Make sure we have enough room to blend in right here. Okay. Got that. A good cleaner can fix mistakes. A great cleaner charges more. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, this is a, this is a redo. Looks like an easy touch with some pinstripe and green. Yep, green and some pinstripe. We're not going to pinstripe it. We're going to try to fix it all pretty close. Looks like there's a little problem right there, too. Okay. Let's grab the green once again. Fill her back up. Okay, this one will be easy right here. And then I'm going to run that a little bit farther out this way because we are a little bit darker there. Okay. Did it mess up the spin or was it just the color? Uh, it was just the color. My fingernail actually messed up the spin a little bit because I went to go scrape that piece off. I kind of scratched it a little bit. But uh, yeah, barely noticeable now. Like if this, uh, this is going to sound kind of crazy, but if this does happen and it's very, it's you're going to be able to tell also slightly that there's a problem. Don't point it out to the customer. It's just, they're not going to see it. There's no reason for them to know it's there. And if you do point it out to them, that's all they're going to see. I know this because I've done it before and I wish I never would have done that. And then I learned a valuable lesson from that. It's like this dude never would have known that there was this, I think it was a pinstripe. I had to fade in the color. And you couldn't really tell. But once I told people, they knew it. They're like, oh, shit, it is. Like, But you literally could not tell. So, yeah, don't tell them. Let them figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if they can, they probably won't. Okay, a little bit of gold. Or just maybe by that time, they get a rock chip right there and they're gone. Yeah. I don't even, even know it was well, they'll get their first rock chip and then they won't feel as bad. Yeah, you're right about that. The first one always hurts. Okay, not that bad. I wish that wouldn't have happened, but it did. Oh, that just happened too. Jeez. Could you put a little yellow in the middle to lighten it a little? Or does that make no, it dark? No, I did. I did put a little yellow in there. I did. I just spilled the whole bunch right there. Okay, well, yeah. I said, yeah, there's way too much to look at. That looks awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, if you were to look really close, so the edge I was talking about that where I kind of had a bad edge where I know it was going to be bad, it's right here. See how it's like a little chunky and the rest of it's pretty damn smooth. It's because of the way I taped that up. But um, if you catch this right on the right angle, you can kind of see a little bit. Do you have tape on it? No. Oh, I do. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, something looks funky. <laughs> okay, let's not pull it off of this one too again. Isaac said, my father would say, can't see it from a helicopter. <laughs> there we go. Does that look better? Okay. So, yeah. Uh, where'd it go? It's right right there. Kind of see a little bit of a 
difference because it is a transparent. It's going to be a little tricky to be able to blend over it, but it can be done. I just, you make sure you stay in that area and then blend out a little bit darker. But there it is. What do you guys think? We did okay. It's an awfully bright board. It's pretty crazy. I like it. The green's cool. All right. Any quick questions I can answer real fast? If not, it's already been over two hours and my head hurts. I'm ready, ready to be done. But I appreciate you guys all being here. John, Owen, Diamond Custom Paint. All you guys appreciate you. Roman, Scott, Michael, Kerry. We got Josh. We got Lewis. We got Jordan. We got Randy. I'm going to say a few of these over. Cody Daniel, thanks for the super chat. Randy again coming in with the super chat. What else we got here? Roman, super chat. Thank you so, so much. Oh, the sign. Swampy's always here. Patrick, Creative Cuts, Chris, Cody, John, Larry, and Josh. Thank you, guys. I miss you, a few of you, but we'll see you on the next one, hopefully next Thursday. We're here every Thursday night, 7 p.m. California time. We usually don't miss any weeks. We're on a roll. We're going to keep it going. Let us know what you want us to see next. Once you get a few layers of clear, you won't be able to tell. Now. It's the landing and the judges are amazed. Thank you. It's awesome. The green is sweet. Good job. Looks great. Thanks again. First timer. Um, amazing work. Awesome job, Adam. Great video. Nice job. Awesome board. Thanks again. Yep. Thanks, Adam. All right. Well, thank you for saying thanks. Yeah. Thank and we'll you see, guys you and we'll see you next next Thursday. Next Thursday. Thanks, guys. Bye. Later. Good night.